I'd like to talk a little bit more about permutations as well as subgroups. I mentioned that a permutation group is a subgroup of a larger group, but what does that mean? A subgroup is a group within a group, but it still has to satisfy the same axioms. So because of that, you can't just take any elements from the group and say that it's a subgroup. Uh, since it has to satisfy those axioms, the group's identity element has to also be in the subgroup. So looking at our augmented chord here, we see that, of course, the identity element is uh, found there. Also, the other axiom, the inverse axiom, we find that 4 and 8 uh, added together mod 12 give us our identity element, which is the definition of the inverse axiom. Um, or if we want to think about it in intervals, we have um, the mi major third and the minor sixth, which, which are inverted intervals of each other, and so when, when adding them together, we come back to uh, C. But now, we, uh, we talked about the first three operations corresponding to the root position and the first and second inversions of our chord, but what about uh, the other operations. We're, we're taught in music theory that there are three uh, positions for a triad chord, the root position, first and second inversions, which this is in harmony with, that we just saw. But if we invert it the way that we're taught in music theory, by taking the bottom note, putting it on top, and then doing it again, eventually we just come back to the root position, and uh, that's that's all we can get, but mathematically there are n factorial permutations for a group with n elements. So for a group with three elements, there have there must be six permutations, not three. But where do we get the other chord positions? Well, looking back here at our, our chord, uh, if we perform the operation beta, which is using the identity element as a line of symmetry, this uh, this right here is the uh, the fourth permutation for the group, and it corresponds to the third chord inversion. And so uh, th it changes the sequence, obviously, because it's a permutation. So rather than going from C to E to G sharp, it's C to G sharp, and it, it circles back around to E again. In real-world application, when we're not restricted to the octave, uh, this is what this inversion looks like, our third inversion. So uh, we have the the C, G sharp, and then E. Now the last two are given by the uh, the operation beta alpha and beta alpha squared, uh, which is given by a reflection followed by a rotation and two rotations respectively. And so this is uh, what the last two per permutations, or inversions, since inversions are essentially permutations, uh, we have our fourth and then fifth. Uh, we come across this one first mathematically, so we, uh, we say that this is the fourth inversion and this is the fifth. So we see how, how uh, group theory helps us to understand music uh, much better. And next we'll look at a couple more um, in of uh, permutation groups and subgroups.